Did you know that dinosaur tracks can be found on every continent? But how did they form? Well, you need lots of mud. And because rock formations with tracks often extend over large regions, no local or small-scale process explains the tracks we see. Only a global flood with continent-wide mud flows could do that. During the months or weeks of Noah's flood, when the water was near its highest worldwide, tidal action repeatedly lifted and briefly dropped sea levels. At those brief moments, the highest land areas may have been exposed, leaving freshly deposited mud for dinosaurs to walk on. That might explain why dinosaur tracks are on mudstone, but without signs of erosion to the layers that hold dinosaur tracks. The very last land creatures to breathe air that were not on the ark were probably adult three-toed dinosaurs and a few sauropods. Most dino babies would have been overwhelmed by the flood early on. A single exhausted dinosaur walking for five days and nights could stomp around enough to form 155,000 tracks. After dinosaur footprints were pressed into the mud, something was needed to seal and preserve them. During this time of highest floodwaters, debris flows washing again over the whole area deposited yet another mud layer. The flows must have moved slowly enough not to spoil the prints, fast enough to carry sediments and fill them in, but also soon enough after the prints were made to protect them from erosion or churning by clams and worms. Secular scientists imagine normal life conditions, like lakeshore muds preserving the dinosaur prints. But if that were true, then why don't today's shorelines preserve fossil shells or bones, let alone fossil footprints that disappear in only days? A global flood helps explain tracks on repeating sets of sediments, the lack of baby dinosaur tracks, and the very broad extent of layers that hold dinosaur tracks. And we find this awesome event in the very first book of the Bible.